Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to yet another episode of The Gloving Paradigm. Ah oh, shit, here we go again. I am your host Peter aka LPD Dubuque and yes I don't know why I keep doing these openings like this but I just do it anyways because I can. Yes, as you guys are probably hearing in the background, you're probably hearing the TV going off. Yes, my husband is sick. He is not feeling very well. He cannot lay down because he can't breathe while he's lying on his back. So he has to sit in a chair. So if you're hearing TV stuff going off in the background, you understand why. And no, I am not going to tell him not to watch TV. Nor is there any other place in the house to watch TV. So I hope you guys are okay with that. I'm hoping with my wonderful, wonderful editing skills... This is the worst! <laughs> that I can filter that stuff out and drown it out with the music overlay as well. But who knows, we'll see how that goes, right? A few moments later. So, what is it this week that we want to cover? It's a very good question, because we get to do another concept catalog. Yeah! Marijuana. That was so terrible, I think you gave me cancer! Okay, yeah, I will certainly stop. Let me just get some water here. 12 seconds later. Yes, so this week is yet another concept catalog. This is one of those mini-series I have going on in my my lovely podcast that a lot of you guys really do enjoy uh, for me. And I'm <laughs> really, really glad that you guys have been enjoying the concept catalog because it's one of those things that I really, really like talking about when it comes to gloving as well. Not just working with your lights and understanding how your lights works with all the programming and color theory and blah 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 yeah totally get that but concept catalog is always a fun one for me so this week we are going to be covering digits and dials so i'm sure a lot of people are going to be like oh boy he's covering digits and dials he should have just done that in glove in tutting yeah, I could have done that in tutting, but they're not. It's not the same concept. It's not the same thing. <laughs> yes, tutting uses digits and dials within its concepts and with its structure to come off with some really cool effects. However, I have to break down digits and dials for you guys to fully understand what it is about this that people need to know. So, by definition, digits is pretty much the dynamic in which the performer utilizes finger independence. As you can see with my fingers right now, going from index, middle, ring, pinky, ring, middle, index. Look, finger independence, guys. Oh. But yes, so <laughs> it is the dynamic in which the performer utilizes finger independence to make intricate shapes and designs with the various digits of their fingers. So if you guys are not familiar with what I mean by digits of your fingers, I don't know why you didn't check out this episode about it. It's right over here, you know, on the... The Bond's movement analysis called the body, right over here. Probably poking it right now. A little longer than a few minutes later. But yes, that is the idea when it comes to digits or digiting. Is you're utilizing the scalings of your fingers, which if you see right here, this is pretty much scaling of your fingers. If you're not, if you're on the audio one, it's pretty much take your index finger, point it straight upwards, curl it so it's curled in, then point it forwards, then curl it in again and point it down. That's the idea of digiting. You're utilizing each knuckle or digit <laughs> to come up with some really interesting shapes. You know, you can come up with certain in finger independence. You know, pass throughs and touching do use digiting. To a great effect. Now, something you do need to understand when it comes to digiting. Digiting is a mechanic, a dynamic, and a concept. It, it, it's a very fluid term that we have in the gloving community. Why? It's because it, it applies to so many things. It can be used as a verb, which makes it a mechanic. I digit my fingers to do the things I need to do. Oh. Oh. It is a dynamic because it breaks things down even to a smaller scale and in breaking steps down into smaller steps. You know, that's why we have digital liquid, we have digital tracing and things of that nature, okay? The other thing I'll also say is stacking 
is a very prominent mechanic that you'll find within the concept of digiting and it's because by showing you with this video you can understand how stacking and this being called digits because you are exemplifying the different types of finger individually with your movements hence why it's called digiting it's one of the big things that people need to understand when it comes to finger independence is where digiting comes into play okay, okay. 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 One other thing I will certainly say when it comes to digiting and dials to this degree is that it creates the scaling effect that you can understand. If you guys remember from my grid video, if you also remember from my tutting concept catalog, right up there as well, I've talked about scales, okay? And I'm not talking about like chromatic scales on, on, on music, no, that's not necessarily. Anything. By scales, I mean the scan is the scaling effect. So this, I know this is gonna sound so convoluted and random, but please, there's a through line to this. Just do it! In my time in the army, when they teach you about navigation, you learn the scale on a map. So you have a one to a thousand scale. I don't know, we're just throwing out a kind of number that's typical I remember. Um, okay. The one to a thousand scale is basically whatever incre increments of measurement that you're using on your map will equate to this. So let's just say one inch equates to a mile, just for simplicity's sake. We're not gonna go into the finer details about that and I really don't wanna hear about it. We're only doing this for the example. We know, we know, we know. <laughs> so one inch equals one mile. That is what I'm talking about when it comes to scaling effects. Arm tutting and king you know, tutting is a big scale to finger tutting, right? Where you do all the things that you do in king tutting, you can do in finger tutting. Tomorrow. That's what I mean by scaling effect. Meanwhile. And of course, with the scaling effect and lends to itself into the grid dynamics that everybody is seeking to master so heavily, and I get it, I totally get it. However, we're not gonna get into that right now. <laughs> So yes, by the first video that I showed you, when the guy's sitting there going like this and changing how he's configuring his digits and so on and so forth, that is considered digiting. Another form of digiting is things like digital liquid, which hopefully I will have videos up on this. I know due to this lovely video from McKinley, we actually have some really good digit scales effects. So this is showing you how to do digit scales. Now I will certainly tell you that Yes, there will be tutorials linked down in the comment section below. So, now that we got digits out of the way, let's go ahead and cover dials. Yes, yes, yes! So the definition of dials, by my definition at least, Who cares? It's basically the dynamic of having two points, or digits, in this sense, rotate equally on the space using two fingers on the same hand, is essentially what you guys are gonna be looking at, all right? So, what do I mean by tiles? So if you're watching this, you're basically are going to see it very easily. But if you are on my audio audience, if you're the one, people who just like listening to my stuff, which thank you guys for keeping that going. Don't mention it. Just take your index finger and put it on top of your middle finger of the same hand, okay? What you're going to do is you're going to separate them. Basically make a nice little triangle angle thing where they're nice and separated apart, but they're still on top of each other in terms of length then you're just going to rotate your fingers around. So that way your index finger is on bottom and your middle finger is up on top before you close. Wow! This is essentially what they mean by dials, all right? The motion that you're seeing with the fingers is essentially the dials. Does it have to be fingers? No. If you had a light here on your elbow and you had your lights on your fans like this and you rotate like this, that's technically considered a dial because you're performing the action of what people know as dials. And if you don't know where we're coming from when we talk about dials is look up a rotary phone. Oh my God, I'm going to confuse so many people with that phone. Okay, boomer. Yeah, just go look up a rotary phone if you have not seen it before. It's one of my personal favorite telephones and it's because you get to do the thing that I like to do. Oh, dialing, ha 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 ha. Oh brother, this guy stinks. Why do I keep doing this to myself? Six and a half hours later. So yes, stacking your fingers and rotating them around, it's very, very common when it comes to dials. 
Is that the only way to do dials? No. <laughs> you can actually use dials to actually kind of climb up and climb down, as you can see. If you, again, audio listeners, just take two fingers, take your index and ring finger, or your index and middle finger, and have them right next to each other. Take your other hand and take your index and point it, have your index finger pointed up and have your middle finger pointed horizontally. Now, put your two fingers in between those two fingers. If you literally move your finger up on top or move it another one on the bottom, this still counts as a dial because you're still performing that action of that rotation. You're showing that rotation of the points. Okay, this all kind of falls into each other and they all lend into each other. This is why digits and dials are tend to be lumped together is because they use the same, essentially the same mechanics to do the things they want to do. Oh, I see. Yeah. So you have various ones. You have, of course, finger styles. You do have hand style dials and you also have arm dials. Ugh, you're the worst. As long as you are showing two points equally rotating around and coming back together, basically, is the idea when it comes to dials. Approximately 10 hours later. All right, that is the idea that you want to pull off. Now, some things I'll definitely say here, pinches is one of the favorite things that a lot of people like to do when it comes to dials, because then you can do things like this. Peter, you suck. Peter, you suck. If, again, audio listeners is basically pinching is where you take two fingers and you put them together. So like take your pinky and your thumbs and put them together. That is basically your a pinch. You can also do that with, you know, index and pinky. You can also do that index and ring, index and middle. Middle and thumb. Anything with the thumb is basically a pinch and it makes it a lot easier for people to understand. Five minutes later. So there are various methods when it comes to Digits and dials, all right? Everyone should know that. There's there's a lot of methods that come with it. First method that I feel like people need to understand or to master is your finger independence. This is where digiting will become so buttery smooth to people. It's where you work on your finger independence, individually moving your fingers around. Now, yes, I know there are some people out there, they're going to come to me and be like, but Peter, look what happened to my hand. I broke it when I was much younger and I fused the tendons together. Now I caused my other fingers to move with it involuntarily. There's nothing I can do about that. <laughs> <laughs> what? It was pretty funny. Yes, I understand that. It is something that I deal with myself. As you can probably see, as I move my right pinky, it pulls my right ring finger down. There's nothing I can do about that unless I go get surgery. Should I go get surgery to do that? No, <laughs> it's just unnecessary in my opinion. It's something that you're gonna have to work around with, but here's the thing. If you have been loving for more than two months and you have not heard of this name yet, which would be surprising if you watched any of my episodes, I have mentioned this guy's name a lot. You are a liar. No, I'm not. But the person you want to go to who's going to help you with your finger independence the most is Greg Irwin. No! This can't be true! <laughs> Don't know why this has to keep going up, but we're gonna keep doing it. Yes, Greg Irwin, the guy who owns handhealth.com. The guy has tons of tutorials to help build your finger independence. I mean, he has loads, loads of contents, people. You gotta, gotta utilize this stuff, man. It's just, ugh. But yes, finger independence is where you want to start building first because once you get the finger independence in, then you can actually do things like pass-throughs and you can move things around, so on and so forth. And once you actually figure out how to move each finger independently, then you can actually do things like digiting and so on and so forth. Much, much, much later. Dials will essentially follow the same suit. Why? It's because again, it uses a lot of the same mechanics. It just takes on a different behavior when you go to perform it. You know, you got digiting where it's just this, where you just kind of stack each other and you just bring it about. And dials is just essentially you're doing this. Wow, that was amazing. Now, 
couple of caveats I want to come to dials is that you don't have to keep your arm still to do the simple rotate. You can get multi-rotated dials, which if you don't know what that is, basically is when you actually like rotate your hand with it as well, and you can actually pull off some major turns and it actually makes it appear like there's multiple turns happening within the dial. Okay, you can even go as far as doing a full 360 dial. 360 dials, you got things like that, okay? Whatever you say, Stone Cold Steve Austin. I'm owning it. So, at the end of the day, pretty much broke down all of these mechanics for you. Pretty much broke down how these methods are worked and how they are supposed to be operated. Now, here's the thing when it comes to digiting is that as long as one thing is happening independently with your fingers is pretty much where you're gonna see digits. You know, you have things like digital liquid, which yes, all these tutorials and things of various ways are all gonna be linked down in the description below. Where did I find all these tutorials? It's a great place that you guys have asked because I keep preaching this every episode. Go to the World Wide Glovers Discord. You think you're better than me? We have an entire library of different concepts that you can look in. You just go to the how to glove category and you'll literally find all of your concepts that you can go through. Anything from flow to musicality, even all the way up to tutting and finger rolls. You'll find it there. It's free real estate. So, pretty much should cover everything I have. Again, if you're looking for tutorials, they're all linked down here, down in the description below. Yes, Greg Irwin will be the first one as the first place I would recommend people going to try out is go with Greg Irwin's videos first. That way you guys are building on your foundations of the mechanics that you need. Build up on that finger dexterity, on the finger strength and finger independence so you can pull off these concepts, okay? Not only that, you're going to find in those description all the tutorials that help you with like digit scales and things of that nature. Again, Starstream Tut did a very, very good job. Highly recommend checking it out. Oh. Thanks, man. But yep, that is pretty much all for my episode once again. I would like to thank everybody who has watched slash listened to my podcast thus far. If it wasn't for you guys, I probably wouldn't have kept going. Not only that, I'm finally, finally getting the thing that I've been asking from the community for almost two years now. And it's not clout. It's not, you know, screaming praise at the rooftop is just one simple thing recognition ain't nobody got time for that all i asked and i'm getting it from you know people that you might be surprised by as you can see in this clip what's uh yeah. what's what's we got a... the uh the parrot or the gloving paradigm or whatever like he he does a pretty decent job like he breaks shit down super adeptly i know I mean, his name is peter but i don't know his name yeah, I, I just know the Gloving Paradigm, but, and I, I know, I think I have Discord, but either way. Not only that, but, you know, I've been talking to Greg Irwin, which, yeah, that's probably been one of the biggest, biggest boosts of confidence of what I'm doing, is hearing somebody like him, who's pretty much been trying to do the same thing, except for just hand health, as for me just doing specific gloving, to hear that he appreciates and commends me for the work that I put out, so. I certainly hope that you guys do enjoy what I have to say and what I am putting out. If you have any questions that I did not cover in this episode, you do have the various places you can hit me up. You got uh, Facebook, you also got Reddit, you also got Discord, you, all the links are in the description below. You can go hit those, follow me there. Uh, no, I don't really feel like it. And of course, if you like the content that I'm making and wish to help me make better content, you have the lovely opportunity to support me on Patreon. Okay, you need to let that oh go. Oh my god, okay. no one cares. It's so boring every day. <sighs> yep, I'm gonna keep pushing this. Please go check it out. It's right there. Here's all the perks. Have fun with that. But yep, that is pretty much all for my episode. I certainly hope you guys enjoy what I had to say. I certainly had a fun time talking about this, but Yep, that is pretty much all. I absolutely love you guys, but I am your host, Peter, a.k.a. LPD Dubuque, and I'll see you guys all next week. <laughs>